And uh, like Curtis says, the end user doesn't really care about that. So how we can enter it in a way where the end user doesn't have to care about that. Um, in general, what we've see, done is basically we have introduced um, IP version 6 pretty early on in our products, both on the handset side, so um, in our phones, um, in the categories that we think that would be needing that first, and also in our network products in the, U, in the parts that we think that uh, the operators will need it first. And basically what we've um, thought about that how to do this is to get the IP version 6 to the end user as early as possible and then look at the other parts of the network after that. Um, this allows the operators to transition to v6 and start v6 service as soon as they um, wish to. Um, in general also, it's not only us of course, uh, also our peer companies have introduced v6 in their products um, from some time ago and many of them have a lot of experience already with that. The PC manufacturers and uh, the um, operating system manufacturers have introduced v6 support and maybe some of you already have, are running v6 without actually knowing it. But of course, there's still a way to go. Um, this is, uh, everything like this needs experience. We're going to do some mistakes. There are certainly challenges ahead of us, but I'm sure that we are on the right way though that a little bit um, slower than what we, did, you know, what we expected. The good thing is that it seems that the operators are now waking up and noticing that they have to um, deploy also V6 and there is a more and more, so to say for us as a vendor, customer demand on V6 and that part has been uh, at least partly solved. Thank you. Thank you. Um John, it's quite interesting. Uh, this, the, the two last two panelists point to a need for a certain amount of cooperation between the vendors, and the operators. In that, um, John just mentioned that in, in deploying, you're going to make some mistakes, and so there must be mutual support of the process going forward, forward for implementing IPv6 in the network. Um, perhaps um, Kurt could give us some indication as to the cost implications for deploying IPv6 in the network. Uh, as I said, I, I think that most of the investments will happen as part of the normal upgrade cycles. Um, and I think that's true for training of staff too. The real cost will come with the actual man hours have to be spent during the configuring. I, I, that said, though, I do think that is a lot, this is actually easier than people think. And that's what I've seen as well. 